Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier and this is The Piracy Show. Now on today's show, we're primarily going to focus on piracy and capital ships. We'll deal with the Banu Merchman a little bit towards the end, but first of all, let's kind of talk about pirates, pirates owning capital ships and whether or not it's a good idea. Now traditionally, when people think of Drake ships... You know, they think piracy and the whole lineup is pretty much built around, you know, quote unquote, the perfect pirate raid. You have the Caterpillar to haul and provide support. You have the Cutlass to be used as a fighter slash a boarding ship. You have the Buccaneer as a dedicated fighter. You have the Herald for e-war and jamming. And you have the Dragonfly, which is also kind of fighters. You can supply boarders with that ship. So, most people, when they think piracy, they look at Drake ships and they go, okay, that's, that's what it was. But originally, you know, now we're going back a ways here, but originally, it was only the Cutlass and the Caterpillar. And the Cutlass was, you know, it had possibilities, but we didn't really know how far it was going to go. And eventually, because of that, it ended up becoming a second fighter, the Buccaneer. And the Cutlass ended up you know, kind of being more of like a hold back kind of fighter and for delivering borders. But it was that and the Caterpillar, which wasn't that impressively armed. Now, it's not to say that the Caterpillar is a slouch, but, you know, it's still primarily a cargo ship or, you know, a deep space rescue vessel, depending on, you know, how it's configured. It's not primarily configured for combat, though I'm sure there's a lot of interesting things you can do with it. You have to remember that same potential exists in every other ship. So a lot of pirates earlier on were thinking bigger. How do I get something with some real hitting power? And, you know, they started kind of looking out there and looking at all the different ships that were coming out and they started asking questions and, you know, the Idris seemed to answer some of those questions. But realistically, it always came back to the traditional Drake lineup of ships. I mean, if you're running that fleet, that entire Drake fleet of all five ships, then you're going to have good mobility. You're going to um, you're going to be low profile, and your fleet's going to be very inexpensive to run, which kind of plays into the whole piracy is for profitability. So why were some pirates thinking capital ships? Why were some pirates looking at the Idris, and even some pirates were buying Idrises? Well, see, the problem was is there were no hard hitters in that lineup. The Caterpillar really was going to be kind of, you know, the top of the food chain in the pirate fleet, as a lot of people thought of it. And there were a lot of sort of borderline capital ships and subcapitals that realistically you didn't have an answer to unless you simply brought overwhelming numbers. And that requires coordination, that requires a lot of people. And even then, you still, when you're attacking a larger ship, a, a more difficult ship to take down, you want to get those shields down fast. You want to disable its systems fast. You don't want to be hanging out in space kind of going, okay, well, let's see how this goes. No, you want to knock it out. You want to be on the spot and you want to get things done as quickly as possible. Now with the Idris, of course, you ha that gave you long-range fighter support that gave you the ability to refuel rearm fighters you know a long way from a, a planetary base or a system and this is going all the way back to the days when you know a lot of people were worried about how much fuel is it going to have how far can i get on this because people were thinking beyond you know working within one star system they wanted to work in multiple and it's back when we used to always ask well, okay, does it come with a jump drive? Every new ship, does it come with a jump drive? Does it come with a jump drive? Because, you know, this was really important to us. So, 
a lot of pirates were thinking, well, the Idris kind of allow, would allow me to support my fighters out into deep space. Which came to the next ship, the Starfarer. Well, uh, it's a cargo ship and a refueling ship. Yeah. But pirates needed fuel too. So pirates were also thinking and buying Starfarers because they needed to refuel in deep space. Which, oddly enough, and some people might not believe it, but also led to the Endeavor. Pirates were buying Endeavors. Why? Medical facilities. Possibly using it for scanning, but primarily medical facilities to help heal up people who were injured on raids. Pirates were going out and buying the Endeavor. And they were saying, well, now we've got, let's see, we've got fleet support with the Idris. We can support our fighters. Now we've got uh, the Starfarer, which is giving us our fuel. And we've got an Endeavor on the way, so that's giving us our medical supplies. Now we can have this mobile fleet that's kind of like a mobile base of operations, and we can operate off of that. It sounded like a pretty good plan. Now, a lot of people would think, okay, well, even if you do that, you're still... You're still going to get criminal rating. You're still not going to be able to take that ship anywhere. I, I mean, that ship is pretty much going to be trapped in pirate space. And eventually someone's going to destroy it. Because, you know, once again, you're a criminal. Well, the answer is, am I? Have you witnessed me committing a crime in my ship? If only cheap ships like... Buccaneers, Cutlasses, and Heralds are going in and uh, attacking a ship. And then all of a sudden, all transmissions are lost because that ship is jammed. And if there's no survivors, no black box, then who's there to tell you exactly what happened and what ships showed up after the fighters showed up? There's a lot of ways, you know, to kind of hide a crime in this game. I mean, already you can turn off the uh, comlink stations. And do you think that that's not going to continue into the live version of the game? That there's not going to be ways to disguise crimes? And even if there wasn't, even if a ship maintained, you know, criminal standing. When we're playing the game right now, we're playing in a little sandbox. And we're soon going to have the entire Sahara Desert to play in. Now, do you assume that people are going to have 100% sensor coverage over the entire space at all times? That you're always going to be under observation? A ship like that isn't something that you bring out every day or something that you bring out on a whim. It's something that you use that's application specific. You don't just go, oh, well, you know what? I'm just going to throw an entire NPC crew on my ship and go out flying and see what happens. No, you're going to, you know, you want to achieve something when you bring something like that out. So chances are, <laughs> like, if, when you bring it out, you're going to have a plan in motion for what you want to do that day. And it's not just going to be like, oh, well, let's see what happens. So... Yeah, I think pirates owning capitals, as long as they're careful with them and as long as they, you know, decide, okay, these are the situations I bring it out in. These are the situations that I don't bring it out in. This is what, this is what I need it for. This is why when I don't need it and then just go from there. I don't think that owning a capital ship should preclude you like, from being a criminal. In effect, I mean, realistically... Who's going to witness <laughs> these crimes? Now, if we're going out and picking on players, then yeah, you're possibly getting yourself into a lot of trouble with a ship like that. But if you're using it against NPCs, no witnesses, who cares? Right? So, once again, I mean, you never know. You might have to have a run-in with a player here or there, but chances are a ship that big you would really only bring it out against other players in limited situations where you knew you controlled the situation so 
realistically, it's speculation. We'll have to wait and see, but I don't think it's an unreasonable gamble. So let's just wait and see. Now, as for the Banu Merchantman, now the Banu Merchantman is a bit of a special case. And I mean, I've said that before. And the real problem with the Banu Merchantman or actually problems is that, well, first, it's a cargo ship of which there is a huge selection of cargo ships. Now, the other problem is, is that it is the first of the Banu starships to come out. So it really is the front runner. It's going to set the tempo for all those other ships. So this is going to be something that they want to get right. And it's going to take some time to do that. Now, I don't know precisely how far along they are in it because for the longest time we were hearing, well, they still want to nail down the, the Banu look, the Banu look. And we had seen those first run concept shots of the interior and whatnot. And, you know, it looked cool. And it definitely with the cranes and the little cargo, you know, sort of almost like the shipping containers like we got these days that were dropping in and out of the ship. That was really cool. And I was really, um, I was really into that ship. I really liked it. I kind of was looking at it and thinking, hmm, possible, con you know, possible contender for a pirate ship. You know, I was wondering about that. And it, and it looked like it was going to be a, a pretty decent raider. But, well, you know, once again, we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, I, I look at that ship and I see a very good ship. But, like, the problem is, is once again, it's one of many cargo ships that CIG, you know, has yet to build. And it's also the front runner for an entire race. So they're going to want to get that look, you know, perfect because it's going to set the stage for every other Banu ship that's ever going to come out. So I would like to see it sooner, but honestly, who knows? And I, you know, I have to defer to the owners of the Banu Merchantman in the end. I mean, my opinion is that ship has been lingering a little too long. And, you know, when I made a video a while ago when I was talking about, well, this ship should, you know, should be finished. This ship should be put on priority. One, you know, it's, yeah, it's the first of the Banu ships. It's a ship that's been sold, you know, for a while on multiple occasions and yet still nothing. But the real, the real reason that I made that video and the real reason why I've, I've kind of chosen to kind of champion this ship and the Caterpillar so much, even before I even owned a Caterpillar, was that, um, you know, back during the old RTVs, people would always ask, you know, the questions. Any news about the Banu Merchantman? Any news about the Caterpillar? And it had gotten to a point where it was, it was almost sad. The responses were sad because... If they didn't, if it wasn't like, oh, we totally forgot about that ship, oh, then there was, there was a couple of occasions where those questions were met with uh, something of a smirk and a chuckle. No, no, no news about the Banu Merchantman. And it just, it graded me. It, it really did because, like, I get it. It's the question that comes up every single freaking day. I get the frustration. I do. But in the end, you know, th like this is this is somebody who's, you know, who's put down s s some money, a fair chunk of money, and this is someone who has supported your project and they just want to hear, you know, something because they haven't heard anything in months. And so they would just like to hear something. And maybe you can't give a date. Maybe you can't give, you know, a precise time, but, you know, just at least give them an indication or, or give them, tell them a story about the development of the ship. You know, things have come a long way since then. And, you know, people have been very patient. 
And, you know, we've already, we've got some nice stuff in game right now. Obviously not nearly what we're going to have when things are done, but we're getting there. And I just, I don't know. I'd like for the Banu Merchantman pilots to be like me. I mean, how would I feel if I were flying around, instead of flying around in my Cutlass, all this time later? You know, after all the all the frustration, I was still just looking at this and thinking, wouldn't it be cool to fly my ship? Anyways, that's my opinion on the matter of the Banner Merchantman. I hope you guys enjoyed the show, and thanks for watching. Quantum Travel Initiated. <laughs>